We came across Martunis as we filmed on Banda Aceh Beach. A teenage boy had brought him over. We gave him food. He was eager to eat. The boy is just seven and a half. He told our Indonesian helper how he and his parents had tried to escape the tsunami in a vehicle. And when tsunami coming, he tried to get the truck. And then he coming to the truck, and then that truck already gone by tsunami also. And then he saw his parent getting by tsunami also. Martunas is very thin, but he was alert. A member of our team was a Royal Marine commando. He knew instantly that the boy needed to see a doctor, and quickly. He was thirsty, perhaps badly dehydrated. For almost three weeks, it seems he'd been living on puddle water and some dried noodles he'd found. It appears this young boy had watched helplessly as his mother and father were swept away from him. Martunis' story is quite simply miraculous. He's clearly in need of medical attention. He's turned up this morning, 19 days after the tsunami struck, and we're among the first to see him since then. What they find, what he find when he find the noodle, the, the noodle that is bringing by water, oh, they eat that noodle. We took him to save the children. He was checked over. So we have to find out if have any injuries or whatever. Martunis has been living on his wits. Now he seemed bewildered. He appeared to be tiring, perhaps as a result of the relief he feels. Finally, he knew for certain he was in good hands. We'll give you a bath, right? We'll wash you with water. They wanted to clean him and take him to hospital. He'll need to be kept very warm because he's a candidate for hypothermia. Okay. They give him new clothes to keep him warm, but the big worry is malaria. The mosquitoes have been breeding yeah. just to make sure that uh, he's clear of malaria, but mostly it will be a bad test. Yeah. Medical attention was the first priority, but registering the boy's name and details was crucial also. It is important too that that information does not become widely known. And you must have to be very careful about how much information gets out. Which is the, the main. Yeah, we're very careful to protect the identity of the children. Too much information gets out, um, there is a risk. That that somebody could try and use that information to make a false claim. It's astonishing that, that kids can be that resourceful. I mean, it's just it's absolutely incredible. Um, but he seems to be fairly fairly fit and healthy. I mean, he's, he's malnourished and he's dehydrated and he's been badly bitten. Um, but we'll get him to the hospital. And Who is the car? Is that one there? It was a short trip to hospital. First, they gave him oxygen. He was unhappy about the needle, but the saline drip would rehydrate him. They felt his stomach for abnormality. It's a real miracle. You're all right. You're gonna be all right. I mean, how, how remarkable is it that he's that he's that he survived, that he's still alive after 19 days? Uh, I think it's uh, remarkable, but uh, it happens, uh, in my opinion, it happens more uh, with children because children are quite uh, strong survivors uh, than the adults. But something still more remarkable was about to happen. These hands would care for him, yes, but nothing could replace this hand. It is his father's, a hand he must have thought would never touch him again. Save the Children had tracked him down in hours, along with his great-grandmother. There will be many in Banda Aceh and beyond who will have lost hope they will ever see loved ones again. What this small boy teaches us is that we must never lose faith. Ian Doverston, Sky News, Banda Aceh in Indonesia.